Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's quite a daunting experience up here, not least the fact that I'm the only New Relic speaker in this session, and we've had such wonderful presentations from our customers talking about the sorts of things that they're doing in their businesses, what's happening in the industry, uh, and uh, also how they're using New Relic to, to enable that. Um, what I'd like to do during this session is to talk about what makes those teams successful, the things that we've seen um, through uh, working with our customers, and we've seen ourselves uh, as well. So you heard earlier this morning about how we changed from an organization that had a monolithic application uh, to over 200 microservices, 50 plus teams developing uh, and deploying multiple times a day. Um, so what makes organizations such as ourselves and these organizations that we've heard from that have this uh, velocity imperative rather than the terminal velocity to drive innovation to their customers to deliver exceptional dis digital experiences successful. <clears throat> so, if I think back to my past, right, um, you may notice a few gray hairs here, that's, uh, uh, that's not worry, that's genuinely old age. Um, but you know, I didn't start with one of these things. If I had, I reckon I could have been a little bit more efficient in terms of delivering innovation. Um, one of the measurements that I could probably have done with when I started as a developer was how long it took the CRT screen to warm up before I could log in to my dumb, wise terminal, right? Um, I, w I did actually get quite a warm feeling when we saw the Kubernetes demonstration this morning, actually, that my old friend Vi was still there. Did anybody else pick that up? Uh, could just have done with it being green on black, and then I'd have been at home. Um, but yeah, what we need to do is we need to try and understand the challenges uh, to organizations that are trying to move fast, uh, and why it's important for them to have effective measurement. So I'm old enough, um, hopefully I won't be beheaded um, for a, a waterfall approach, um, but I remember waterfall, uh, and throughout my career, I actually went through, uh, I was in line of business, um, and then I became a software developer because I brought a business perspective to development, uh, which was quite uh, unique back in those days. Uh, and then I started working for a company which focused on QA. Um, and I remember one of the uh, mantras that I used to hear from my customers was that if you can't test it, you can't build it, right? That was the QA gateway. Was like, if I can't test this, no way it's getting into production. So you better make sure when you build it, when you design it, that you know how you're going to test it, right? Um, but at the rate that we're moving now, you can no longer have that hard and fast gateway. We heard earlier about how we're continuously doing testing how the way that we do testing is changing. Um, and the way that we're deploying is changing at such a rate that now the mantra is you don't go into production without instrumentation, right? Um, if you don't know what's going on when you hit production, uh, then it can't go into production. So the canary testing, I, th I think there probably are a few more people in here that do canary testing. Maybe they had uh, tired arms or something. Um, but you know, that's, that's a way of just testing the water and, and being able to determine, is it good or is it bad, right? But you need that information, you need that feedback straight away. So how do you know whether your efforts uh, around DevOps are worth it, right? If you're moving to this, faster paced way of delivering innovation to your customers. How do you know whether or not you're being successful, whether you're doing the right things, whether you're actually going to dominate or create that market effectively? Well, there are a couple of challenges with measuring the success of DevOps. Um, the benefits are, 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 you know, they're well publicized. If you read the State of DevOps uh, report from 2017, it talks about you know, more, often, uh, more frequent deployments, um, reducing MTTR, all of that stuff, uh, better quality applications. But what are the challenges that limit uh, achieving that success? Well, the first challenge basically is the siloed architecture of our businesses. Um, I think earlier one of the presentations was talking about the heel diggers, right? the people that can't change. It's not about technology. Technology forms a part of it, but it's actually the people and the process and the culture that has to change. And at the moment, you know, a lot of organizations, there may be a will to change, 
Um, but they're broken into silos where different people have different tools, they have different views on the world. Um, and although they have a shared common goal, their view of how they're achieving that goal is very different. And the second problem is that the environments and the architectures uh, and the applications that we're developing now are so complex and so diverse. You know, we're talking about um, you know, microservices, containers, serverless, et cetera. We're talking about environments that one minute look like one thing and another minute look like another thing, right? How do you get a handle on that and measure that effectively? So with those two things in mind, if you look at this year's uh, State of DevOps report, 2018, there's a couple, there's an awful lot of um, uh, information in there, but there's a couple of things that stand out. Um, and the first one lines up very, very uh, nicely with that perception of the different silos in an organization. So in the State of DevOps report, they asked a series of questions and they asked them of different people. So the C-suite, the management, and the teams that were actually responsible for delivery. Uh, and then rated their responses. So I'd like to pull a couple of these out, right? Okay, so um, the first one is, when you decide what it is that you're gonna work on, what are the factors that you use to make that decision, okay? And you know, when asked whether or not it's based on business needs, the C-suite say, or the majority say yes. But when you get down to the people that are responsible for delivering it, um, less so. They're not sure whether it is the right thing that they should be working on. The second one is, uh, you know, before starting a project, <coughs> are there concrete success criteria? Again, at the top level of the business, absolutely. Nearly two thirds uh, of the, uh, the C-suite said, yes, we have concrete success criteria. But when it comes down to the delivery, it's well below half. And then finally, you know, are the success metrics, the way in which we gauge whether or not we're moving in the right direction, for projects visible. And again, there's a, there's a perception at the top level that they are, but further down where people are actually engaged in delivering those changes, uh, there's less uh, confidence in that. And then the other um, significant information from the report was around how organizations are shifting from doing things manually um, when it comes to collecting data and measuring the success of their projects to doing that automatically. Uh, and that doesn't just extend to things like system metrics, but perhaps more importantly, it's saying that business metrics should automatically be available to anybody that needs them, uh, that's involved in the transformation of that organization. <clears throat> so, what we're saying is it's time to connect all of those measurements. It's time to make them available to everybody that needs them in order to steer the ship in the right direction and to make those course corrections as required in order to meet the changing business needs. <clears throat> so a lot of customers, they say to us, well, where, how do we get started, right? How do we um, start to measure things effectively? How do we start to understand what is actually happening in terms of our delivery? Well, we see that there are five key dimensions uh, to measuring um, your effectiveness when it comes to delivery. And we call it the uh, software measurement framework. Those dimensions, they look at different things. People, yes, they have different perspectives, they have different responsibilities, but ultimately, they're all working towards the same, the same goal. So these are things like you know, engineering velocity, how quickly are we delivering, service quality in terms of SLAs and uptime, the application and the infrastructure, how is that performing? And the customer experience. Um, ultimately, that's where you know, the rubber hits the road. And it is all about that customer experience. And then ultimately, what does that experience deliver in terms of business outcomes? <clears throat> so if we look at those in turn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna you know, highlight some of the KPIs that you might be interested in. Uh, how you might go about measuring them, and then give you some examples of dashboards that they might look like. So the first question is, is your site up or down? The availability question. The good old uh, SLA, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
I, I, t I have a bone to pick with the availability SLA as well. I think there are three, uh, three aspects to availability. Um, is it up or down? That's easy, right? Is it performing? Because if it's too slow, it may as well not be available. Uh, and then the third one is, is it functioning? Because it can be available, but you just can't click on the button. So when it comes to measuring service quality and availability, you, you are going to want uh, an availability SLA. You are going to want to know whether or not your mobile applications are crashing, your deployment success rate, what the error rates are, et cetera. And you can do that using things like um, synthetics, as an example. Okay? So days gone by, you might have had to sort of dig around to create a report, what was our uh, service level achievement for the past week, the past month. It might take you a day, it might take you an hour. Might take you half an hour. Um, but with synthetics, you just configure what is the core process that we're interested in monitoring. You set it up, starts running, simple dashboard, and if anybody asks you the question, the answer's there. So you can go away and do something else, right? Spend your time on a more productive activity. Am I meeting my customer expectations? So this is the, the customer experience side of things. Um, and ultimately, the customer is king, whoever the customer is. It could be you know, an end customer, it could be B2B, it could be B2B2C. Um, but uh, uh, any, any people in the room familiar with lean? Lean methodologies, right? One of the core principles of lean, see the value from the customer's perspective. If you're not delivering value, then you're just, it's waste, right? So am I meeting my customers' expectations? And those expectations are changing all the time, right? We always want it faster. Uh, we always want it, you know, a slicker process, et cetera. So let's look at, you know, what that customer is actually experiencing. Let's look at things like the page load time. We heard about app decks, you know, uh, what's the customer satisfaction? Um, time to interaction. How long does it take uh, for the, the page to be functional for um, the customer to use it? Things like cart abandonment rate. Um, and, and things which lean towards the, the business side of the house as well, failed payments, failed transactions. So this is what it might look like. Um, it, you know, if you were to put together a, a new Relic dashboard for this, yeah, I'm interested in my buying journey, my conversion funnel, uh, number of um, customers that are affected by errors when it comes to revenue. Um, but what you're seeing here highlighted is, uh, this is the max duration for the back end. Um, and what that's telling you is that, you know, you already have customers that get the worst experience, but now it's just got worse, right? Um, so what's the impact to your reputation, your brand, your business in that respect? Uh, can a system handle a traffic spike? We heard about, you know, DDoS attacks and so on, but, you know, a lot of the traffic spikes that, uh, um, that we have to handle, we want, right? We, we force them. We, marketing campaigns go out there, or, you know, adver advertising, or there's a major sporting event, right? So can we handle that spike, right? So here, this is more looking at the back end, um, the application and the infrastructure performance, and we're looking at, you know, what's the scale and availability, how much are we spending to support it, host utilization, database performance, which is always key, and we'll be hearing from Frank later on about how you know, these things are important to them at carrentals.com. So what does this look like? You know, are things working the way that we expect as we see the various peaks? We can see um, you know, the, the response times. Uh, and here we've got an example of where you know, the database latency seems to have a direct correlation to the response time uh, that our users are experiencing. So maybe that's where we should be uh, targeting our efforts. And then, are we delivering value to our customers fast enough? Uh, and that's been the main theme of this event, really, is speed. How do we accelerate things? And if you want to retain your market, you have to innovate. If you want to capture a market, you have to innovate. If you want to dominate it, if you want to be the only one, if you want to be Christopher Lambert, um, then you've got to innovate, right? So here we're looking at the velo velocity and agility. You know. Um, so how, how quickly can we get from idea to market? What's the cost of change? How, how long does it take us to recover? Right? We are going to mess it up. If we're moving at pace, we will mess it up. We do. New Relic does. Right? We have many examples where we've deployed something and we've rolled it back very, very quickly because it's not had the desired effect. These are the things that you need to be 
monitoring and measuring. So this might form the basis of maybe a daily stand-up meeting where you're looking at the um, deploys and the code commits and so on, and what's, what's the impact of those. Uh, and in this particular example, what you're seeing is there seems to be a, you know, a correlation uh, between the code commits and the number of alerts which are being generated. Now, that may be a problem in itself, but also maybe you need to think about as you're moving forward, how do you change your alerting policies? You might need to you know, change the way that you manage things because your functionality is changing, your expected behavior is changing as well. And then perhaps most importantly, we do this for a reason, right? It's all about the business. Are we adding the business value? So here you're looking at things which, you know, at the end of the day, if your business is running through your application, it's the perfect place to capture the measurements that tell you whether or not your business is performing. So things like, you know, the revenue, the product mix, the transaction volume, the growth, uh, the adoption, all of those sort of metrics that tell you, is my business moving in the right direction? And it depends what your business is, right? If you're an e-commerce company, it's, it's revenue, it's car transactions, it's baskets, it's all that sort of thing. Media, it might be ad impressions. SaaS, it might be customer churn, new logos. But it doesn't really matter. That is your business that is running through that uh, application. So coming back to the New Relic software measurement framework, as I said, there are these five dimensions. And everybody will have a view but they have a view of the same data, and they have a view of everybody else's data. So when it comes to working towards a shared goal, then this is the place where you can start to align those teams to focus on delivering innovation with effective manage, uh, measurement um, and uh, to move your business forward. <laughs>